this is my second time trying to fuck this shit. My hair looks bad. Sorry. Hi. I had to adjust the camera. This is my second time trying to film this video because the first time I tried to film it, a dog barked. Now, on this street, when a dog barks, the whole street wakes up and all the dogs start barking and my life just gets ruined, my productivity gets completely fucked and it's just a bad time. It stresses me out. The dogs on this street conspire against me. You can hear the barking on this camera picks up so much sound. You can hear the dog barking. Okay, um... I should end this unhinged rant now and probably start filming this video. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel of your favorite or soon to be favorite bookworm twink supreme. If you love books and if you want to see this motherfucking twink talk about them, I'm in a swearing mood. You should probably look for this subscribe button and finger it. And while you're down there, look for the bell because when you click that bell, when you click that bell, hear me out. Hear me out, bitch. YouTube will magically notify you when I post new shit. So, if you wanna be the first to comment and you wanna chat with me and you wanna correspond, what am I saying? <laughs> Click the bell, okay? It's not gonna take that long. I'm gonna give you some time, okay? I'm waiting. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> anyway, now that you're done doing that, which I sincerely hope you did, anywho, Today I'm going to be recommending you horror books, but not just any horror books, no, no, no. Specifically horror books that are a hundred pages or less. Shorter books. Books that you can bang out in one sitting, books that you can read if you are not a fan of the horror genre and you want to get into it but not be in a state of terror for 300, 400, 500 pages, no. These are the kinds of books that will give you a little taste of the genre as a whole and then you can decide if you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you want to move on to books that are of greater length. This video is for you, these recommendations are for you, and I hope I can help you find your next read. Also, it is October. Like, if you're not a horror reader and you want to get into the horror vibes, I can help you out, okay? I can only help you out if you let me help you, so sit back, Stay with me and let's begin. So the first book I'm going to recommend to you is In the Tall Grass by Stephen King and his son, Joe Hill. So this little novella was a father-son collaboration that they published together. We follow these two siblings, they're driving somewhere in a very rural country area of the United States and they are driving on this road with tall grass on both sides of the road and they pull over for whatever reason and they hear the sound of a young boy calling out from the tall grass. So basically we follow them as they decide to enter the grass and hopefully find the source of this very distressed sound. This book was actually adapted to film. There is a film adaptation on Netflix starring Patrick Wilson, I believe, and a couple of other actors that I honestly can't be too bothered to look up at the moment, but Patrick Wilson's in it. And he was the best part of Phantom of the Opera. Sorry, Gerard Butler. <laughs> that was just sad. Anyway, so who knew the guy could sing? Fuck. Anyway, so this was turned into a film, and in my humble opinion, this book is a lot better than the film, namely because the things we make up in our minds are a lot of the times scarier than what we see on film. So the things that happened in this book did look quite cheesy in movie form when you, we could actually see them attempt to depict what was being shown. But on the page, it was quite terrifying. And I loved the claustrophobia. I love the fact that you can smell the grass, you can taste the grass, you can feel the disorientation of the characters in this book. It's really creepy. It's really short. The audiobook is actually pretty good too. And this will give you a lovely introduction to Stephen King's short story collection because the guy does actually write a lot of short stories and some of his short stories did become very famous. I think the movie Stand By Me was based on a short story by Stephen King. Fact check me in the comments, though I think I'm right. I think even The Shawshank Redemption was based on a short story. Damn. So, great stuff. Good stuff. If you've never read Stephen King before, this would be a wonderful place to start. So the next book I'm going to talk about is one for the more extreme horror fans. If you think In the Tall Grass didn't sound as interesting, and you want something with gore, and you want something that is disturbing, and you want something that will likely not land you a second date if you are describing the plot of this book to somebody who doesn't know about the horror genre, 
don't do that. I am going to recommend to you the book Header by Edward Lee. So as I said, this is extreme and definitely not for people who are offended easily. But then again, this advice can perhaps be extrapolated to my entire channel as a whole. So if you're here and you're not new, then this kind of recommendation is likely to be expected. And if you are new, I'm kind of, uh, I'm a huge fan of extreme horror films and books, so there you go. And this is one that I really, really liked. So basically we follow these two main characters. We follow this guy who is a cop. Based on what I can recall, I think he's either new on the job or that he was transferred to a precinct to this very rural area, this very rural backwoods area. So he's just not accustomed to the environment and the kinds of people in the place this story is set. And then we follow this other guy who has just gotten out of jail and he moves in with his grandfather because his parents have died. And his chapters are the best. I'm not gonna tell you about the guy who moved in with the grandpa. You need to find out for yourself. But the cop, on the other hand, is investigating a string of deaths that have occurred in this town. And the manner of the deaths are bizarre and not ones that I would like to spoil. The thing that I am especially not gonna spoil is what a header is, because when I found out what this was in a certain chapter on a certain page, I felt very dirty. I felt like I was reading something that I wasn't supposed to be reading, and I subsequently burst out into laughter because it was just so absurd and so funny. This is a horror book through and through, but it is also hilarious. <laughs> if you share the same sense of humor as me, I was bent over laughing my ass off in so many of the scenes. This is one of the funniest books I have read all year. It is disgusting, it is gory, and <laughs> the ending, the very last scene, is just so calculatedly sadistic and messed up that I just wanted to laugh and cry at the same time. So the fact that I got to experience this roller coaster ride in a very short length is a testament to what a fantastic writer Edward Lee is. So the next book I recommend is To Be Devoured by Sarah Tantlinger. So we follow this woman named Andy and she comes from a very troubled past and her general upbringing and her sexuality because this is also a sapphic story so she has a girlfriend and their relationship is pretty strained. I'm not gonna give too much away, but basically we witness her downward facing spiral because of lots of unchecked trauma. This book's title comes from the fact that because of her loneliness and isolation and unchecked trauma, she decides to become one with the vultures outside her house. I'm not gonna elaborate, but there are serious trigger warnings for so many things in this book. What I loved so much about this book was its examination of loneliness and the emptiness we feel because of the bad things that have happened to us in life. And this is written so well. There is so much gore, but the way the violence and bloody shit is written about is just so beautiful. Add this to your TBR, great stuff. So next I'm gonna be recommending the book Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. This is the only book I have read from this author. I haven't read My Heart is a Chainsaw and I have not read The Only Good Indians, but I have read this and I did really, really enjoy it. So basically we follow this group of friends who find a mannequin in the woods and they include this mannequin in their friends group. One day they decide to prank one of their friends by bringing this mannequin into the cinema with them, but the prank takes a turn and things happen. It's a short book, so I can't necessarily divulge much of what happens, but we take a turn for the worst, and there are some twists, and it is very creepy. And it's weird. It's quite weird. But I wouldn't say that it's weird enough to alienate many readers, unlike books like Bunny and other books that are quite bizarre that people end up DNFing. This is quite accessible, and people who are not quite accustomed to horror will find something worth reading over here. Good stuff. So the next book I'm gonna recommend is Dear Laura by Gemma Amor, and this is a book that I actually just finished yesterday, and it reminded me so much of the book Pen Pal by Dathan Arbok, which I have raved about on this channel, and it's because this book also has a pen pal element to it. So we basically follow this young girl named Laura, and the book opens up with her as a full-grown adult reminiscing on her childhood, and the events that brought her to where she is in present day. So we learned that when she was young, at the age of 13, I think, she had this boyfriend named Bobby and she witnessed him going missing and her life has been changed ever since because 
Every year for her birthday, Bobby's alleged kidnapper sends her letters asking her for personal things, be it her, her underwear, and even things that are super personal like a used napkin or a used tampon and shit like that. And in return, he gives her letter to coordinates. And these coordinates supposedly will eventually lead her to where Bobby is. And this book is so creepy. And I binged this in one day. It's not like super, super bummer depressing like Pen Pal, even though it does get depressing and it does get very dark and it does get really disturbing. And yes, it is only a hundred pages long, but it does does pack a punch. The way this author writes her makes her feel so realistic. You get to understand her motivations, even though she does certain things that may come off as stupid. You get to see why she makes these decisions and the author never judges her. And as a matter of fact, she writes in a very detached way. Like we're just observing Laura on her journey, but we do get to know her very well. And we do get to know her enough to assume why she does a lot of what she does. Great stuff. <laughs> okay, so next I'm gonna recommend the book Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke. And this book is quite a ride, quite insane. It's about this guy who has this normal life. He's got this girlfriend, he's got this house, he's got a normal life, got a job, all the stuff that society tells you you gotta have. Anyway, uh, so one day he decides to go to this place to buy some chocolate. And in the store, he sees this kid throwing a tantrum, going berserk. The kid's mom looks like she's at the end of her rope. She looks like she has had enough of this kid. She looks like she cannot cope with the life of motherhood. So this guy, I think his name is Phil, comes in to remedy the situation. He tries to calm him down, and little does he know that this kid is no ordinary kid. No, sir. <laughs> so Phil gets his chocolate, and Phil gets home. And when Phil gets home, he sees that this kid is in his house and that he has essentially become the prisoner of this mysterious child from hell. This book was so insane, it was so crazy, it was creepy, it was fun, it was fast. It is perfect for Halloween, but it will also kind of make you wish that you did not pick it up because you will be put off from eating candy forever. You will never want to touch a sweet treat or anything with sugar ever again after reading this book because of what happens. And it's perfect to help you gauge whether or not you would like to try more from both this author and this genre as a whole. And after Sour Candy, I'm gonna recommend The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. Is it Gillian or Gillian Flynn? What, what is, how do you pronounce this lovely person's name? So this author has only published four books, I believe. I think it was Sharp Objects, Gone Girl, Dark Places, and this. I think I can confirm that this one is very different from her other books in that her other books were very much thrillers, and this one does have more paranormal and horror aspects to it. This one does feel more like a horror book than a thriller book. We basically follow this woman, she does these hoaxes, she pretends to be a psychic or something, and she is hired to do this psychic shit in this big house, and she realizes that she's in over her head because this house could actually likely be haunted. Also, there is a very creepy kid in the house, and what do we say about creepy kids? I don't know what we say about creepy kids, but they, they are a thing that we stand in movies, but not in real life. Anyway, so this book is really good. The only thing I didn't like about it was that it was really short. It could have been a bit longer. A lot of things are set up and there are some twists, but because of the book's length, we get to those twists and reveals really quick. So there isn't enough time to marinate in the atmosphere and the creepy vibes that she sets up quite effectively, I must admit. And it could have been a bit longer in the middle specifically because when the twist comes, it's just like, oh, oh wait, I, I don't want to know about this just yet. I want to be in suspense a bit longer, you know what I mean? As a whole, this book is really good. Some people complained about the ending, but I thought the ending was pretty neat and pretty funny. I wasn't mad. I was not mad. And last but not least, I'm going to be recommending a book that I was thoroughly disturbed by. I am so glad that this book is getting as famous as it's getting because I read it back when I was seeing it here and there, but no big booktubers were talking about it. And I was like, for something this damn good, I think other people should really be talking about it more. And now I'm starting to see it on bigger channels, which is making me really happy. And that is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRoga. 
I read this book for my Summerween blog and I, yeah, 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 okay, this was, a, it was a trip and I loved it. So this book is told in a unconventional format. It isn't standard prose. This is a story told through direct messages and emails. So I didn't know that going in and you might be surprised also, but it works. And despite the fact that it is quite short and told in a non-traditional style, it is way more atmospheric than most thrillers are nowadays. And you'll know what I am talking about when you get to it, hopefully at some point. So we follow these two women whose names I don't remember, but one of them is selling an apple peeler on this online forum and the other one purchases the apple peeler and through that correspondence they develop a relationship that does go to very dark territories. And this is a story that is about loneliness and the things we do in desperate attempts to fulfill the part of us that craves human interaction but doesn't necessarily get it. And especially in today's age with the quarantine and the lockdowns and staying home nonstop, we really are disconnected from our fellow man or from nature. So we stay at home and we feel lonely. I don't know if this book was written in 2020 during all the craziness, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was or if the author was experiencing the lockdown blues and channeled it into this wonderful work of art. But that's what it felt like to me as I was reading it. Anyway, that's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching. Like and comment and subscribe. I sincerely hope I helped you find your next spooky read. If you have any recommendations for short horror books that you wanna add to the discussion of, comment them down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in future videos, but until then, take care. I lose myself